ultimately it's not about anything external. Everyone is arguing about climate change, whether it's real or not. I don't think it really matters. What matters is what you carry inside of yourself, what you intend to create with each of your actions and how you treat and relate to everything that surrounds you, to that external world, nature, animals, other people. In today's video, I'm going to share with you 10 low waste habits you can adopt to live more sustainably. The first habit is making homemade cleaners. Homemade cleaners are usually a mixture of some of the following ingredients. Wet vinegar, pastille soap, lemon, hydrogen peroxide, baking soda, borax, water, and essential oils. I use all-purpose cleaner pretty much for everything. I mix all the ingredients in a mason jar and fill it with water. Make sure to shake it before use and for an extra boost on surfaces you can sprinkle on some baking soda, spray and scrub. Besides all-purpose cleaner I also make glass cleaner. I mix half a cup of hydrogen peroxide, two and a half cups of water and one drop of dish soap. If you are not up to mixing your own cleaners, many sustainable stores sell concentrates. Basically what you do is you fill your bottle with water and add a concentrate to it. And another alternative is to visit local stores. I was lucky enough to find a store that sells Castile soap and all-purpose cleaner in bulk. The next habit is making a homemade plant milk. Unlike homemade cleaners, plant milk is much more time consuming and messy. I tried making it by hand a few times and I just didn't see myself nor majority of people uh, staying consistent with the whole process. <laughs> So I started looking into the alternatives and what I found is called an almond cow. It's no doubt my favorite kitchen machine ever invented. You simply add your favorite ingredient combination to the filter, fill the base with water, run two full cycles and you have a homemade plant milk with no mess within minutes. Not only it allows me to make a fresh, homemade, natural, organic plant milk but also inspires to try a variety of vegan recipes that can be made with the leftover pulp. The next habit is recycling and composting. I don't know about you but I'm definitely guilty of throwing jars, bottles and plastic containers without rinsing them first. We are all familiar with the phrase uh, reuse, reduce, recycle, repurpose something like that, but not many people talk about how you should recycle and what cannot be recycled. And not many people talk about it because it's not very straightforward. In fact, it's very confusing. I'm far from being a recycling expert, but I did learn some things and this is what I do. I empty all jars, bottles and containers, wash and let all packaging items dry before discarding them into recycling bin. I separate plastic, paper, glass and aluminum. I clean the foil, let it dry and collect until I have enough of it to make a bowl and then throw it in the recycling bin. I use a composting service for food waste and other compostable items like diaper diapers, dental floss, occasional PLA containers and anything else that can be industrially composted. The next habit is shopping wholesale. Shopping in bulk is another way to use less plastic and create less waste. Bulk is referred to food that is sold in scoopable containers without packaging. You can get dry goods like flour, sugar, nuts, seeds, grains, pasta, beans, granola, dried fruits, and even spices. Besides dry goods, you can buy honey, vinegar, oils, cleaners I've mentioned earlier, dairy, soap bars and loose leaf teas. This is what you need to do to get started. The first step is to prepare your zero waste shopping kit. You will need anywhere between two and five reusable grocery bags, up to 10 produce bulk bags, be they plastic or cloth ones, as well as some glass bottles and jars. The next step is to find a bulk location. Most grocery stores have the bulk section in their health food aisles, but there are also bulk co-op-like shops that focus on natural, healthy and local food. 
The next step is to plan your zero waste shopping ahead. If you want to shop zero waste, you either need to carry your shopping kit with you at all times or you need to plan your shopping ahead. <laughs> because I'm a terrible planner, I had to make a habit of carrying my bulk necessities with me at all times. And now that I'm a mama, I very rarely go outside without my baby and my baby usually comes with the stroller and uh, the storage room in the stroller is where I keep all my bulk necessities. The next habit is an odd one, it's collecting jars. Besides reducing packaging waste, the point of collecting these jars is to create an aesthetically pleasing environment in your home without an extra cost. This is another project of mine that I've been working on and documenting for over six months now. And as soon as I'm happy with the final result, I'll be sure to share the transformation. The next habit is shipping sustainable sustainably. Since we've already established my hoarding tendencies, <laughs> jars aren't the only items I collect. I also keep and reuse shipping boxes that I get from shopping online and I keep them so I can easily and efficiently get rid of other possessions. Another tip about sustainable shipping is tape. You don't want to use plastic tape. I'm so glad my plastic tape is almost done and from now on I'm going to be using this paper tape instead that is both recyclable and compostable. Another advantage is that it's already adhesive, meaning you won't need to add water. And if you want to completely step up your shipping game, you could get a thermal Dumo label printer. It uses less paper and doesn't need ink or toner. The next Next habit is cooking and storing sustainably. Thanks to the rise of sustainable brands, going low waste never looked so good. I'm slowly but surely swapping everything disposable with zero waste alternatives. I still have some Ziploc bags and plastic brushes left and I'll be using them as long as I can. And unfortunately, we are still using paper towels at our house, but I did find three free paper towels that are made of bamboo, same as our toilet paper. I mentioned in the previous video. It took me about two months to change the habit of constantly reaching out for a paper towel and it's mind-blowing how strong these habits get. And unless you eliminate it altogether, in this case stop buying paper towels, you will need to put effort in changing that habit. These are some of the swaps to consider. Try swapping your Ziploc bags with reusable glass or metal containers, stasher bags, wedgie huggers. Try swapping your paper towels with traditional reusable kitchen towels and compostable washcloths. These can be washed hundreds of times along with your laundry or in a dishwasher. Try replacing your parchment paper with a non-stick silicone baking sheet that not only reduces waste but also eases the cleaning process. Try replacing your plastic brushes with bamboo brushes. Try biodegradable dish soap pouches, hard dish soap bars, or buy soap in bulk so you can refill at home. Try replacing your regular dishwasher tablets with the ones that come in a zero waste packaging. I use drops. The next habit is carrying your reusables with you. As I briefly mentioned earlier, I carry my zero waste shopping kit with me at all times. And besides that, I also carry a water bottle in case I'm thirsty, a reusable straw in case I want a smoothie, a food container and utensils in case I'm eating out and want to grab my leftovers to go. And I plan to also include a reusable cup later when the virus restrictions was an a bit more. The next habit is eating less meat and dairy. Some believe that eating meat made us intelligent, so let's use our intelligence and notice that the only constant in the evolution of life is change. And the question is, will we be able to evolve and become more conscious or sink back into the unconscious? Nowadays, most people are over-consuming meat and other animal products. According to our world and data, meat consumption tends to rise as we get 
richer. So it's not about needs, it's about wants and availability. As a global average, per capita meat consumption has increased approximately 44 pounds since 1961. The average person in the United States consumed around 194 pounds of meat in 1961 and 273 pounds in 2017. This increase in per capita meat trends means total meat production has been growing at a much faster rate than the rate of population growth. And between 2019 and 2024, meat consumption is expected to rise due to population growth and rising incomes in developing countries. I'm not saying everyone should go vegan, everyone has the right to choose for themselves, but what I'm suggesting is that bringing balance is crucial both for you as an evolving conscious being, the animals and mother nature. And the final habit for today is regressing back to the old way of doing your laundry. There are levels to an eco-friendly laundry routine. I personally don't have enough awareness and motivation at this point to go all the way, but I improved a couple of things in my laundry routine. I sort laundry by color and texture. I do only full loads and use a plastic-free natural laundry detergent. I wish I air dried clothes but I guess this will be my next step towards sustainability. Uh, when it comes to detergents, I've tried True Earth, Package Free and Nature's First and I loved Nature's First the most. It works well as a detergent as well as a stain remover. I also use the stain remover stick. It does wonders with all kinds of stains, even a year old ones. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video. I hope you learned something new and if you did, please like this video, say hi in the comments below and consider subscribing for more videos on conscious living and minimalist motherhood. Thank you so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.